Welcome. This is Joshua with Moriel TV and James Jacob Prash for September 23rd, Sunday, this week in Prophecy. Blessings in Jesus, dear friends. Wonderful to be with you. Coming from Los Angeles, California, this week in Prophecy. Moriel, of course, is not a political organization. We do not align ourselves or endorse any political party. We simply look at events, political, strategic, economic, and otherwise, in light of biblical prophecy. And we understand from the books of Zechariah, the books of Job, the book of Daniel, the book of Revelation, that there is a correlation between struggles in the heavenly spiritually, between the angelic and the demonic, between God and the satanic, and what transpires in time and space on earth. This is particularly acute in the book of Daniel because it's Yahweh, it's the Lord, who establishes kings and removes kings. The political struggles reflect the spiritual struggle. Now, ultimately, we know the Lord will reign for a thousand years before eternity. Ultimately, we know Christ will return and destroy the kingdom of Antichrist. But we also know that penultimately, the Antichrist will arise. And as we've been warning very often, very frequently for a number of years, the stage is being set for him in many arenas, certainly the, the arena of religion, but not least of all, the arena also of global politics. And we've been saying for some time, the most we can hope for is a period of respite, similar to what took place in the revivals of King Josiah before the Babylonian captivity. There will, of course, be another Babylonian captivity, as it were, the rise of Babylon the Great, the footstool of Satan, again, with the dawn of the Antichrist. We are something in a, we are of something in a period of respite now. The Brexit vote in Great Britain, the election of a non-establishment figure in the United States, who was not really a member of either party, both of whom were, which are corrupt, uh, who was sympathetic to Christians and strongly supportive of Israel. We are in a period of respite right now. How long it will last remains to be seen. But that does not only depend on elections or the way people vote, it depends on the way Christians pray. It is absolutely crucial that we pray for those in authority, for Mr. Trump, for Mr. Pence, we need to pray that the right replacement for Theresa May comes into play in Great Britain, and that Jeremy Corbyn, a vehement opponent of Israel and an anti-Semite by all reasonable analysis of what he says and does, does not become the Prime Minister of Great Britain. We need to look at these things. Let us also understand that while upwards of 81%, perhaps 82% of Republicans are outspokenly pro-Israel. Um, only about 20% of Democrats are. There is a battle over Israel. Remember, Satan is trying to prevent the return of Christ. The Jews must be back in Israel and in Jerusalem for him to return, according to the book of Zechariah, chapter 12, the book of Matthew, chapter 23, verses 39 and 40, and according to Luke, chapter 21, verse 24. They must be there. Satan is trying to have them removed from that city. Hence, there is a spiritual conflict. It's not just about a president moving an embassy. It's not just about political opposition. It's not just about Israel hating shadow governments in Great Britain under Jeremy Corbyn. It's not about any of those things alone. It's about the spiritual forces on back of them the principalities, the powers of the air that Paul the Apostle writes about in Ephesians and that we see coming into play in the books of Daniel, Revelation, and also Zechariah and uh, various other books. But let's look at what's happening. There's the fact of Israel. Remember, only a minority of Democrats now support Israel, and many of them are old people, old Jewish voters and things like this. The old-time Democratic Party ended with Joe Lieberman. The Democratic Party of, of Daniel Patrick Moynihan or John F. Kennedy 
or Senator Scoop Henry Jackson <coughs> or Senator Sam Nunn. Those Democrats are gone. Moderate Democrats or centrist Democrats are dinosaurs. They've disappeared. In fact, establishment Republicans are closer to what the Democratic Party was in the terms of the way people think of the Democratic Party. It is no longer the party of the 50s or the 60s or the 70s. It's not even the party of the Clinton era. It is taken over by the radical left, moving increasingly to the left, as Great Britain did with the election of Margaret Thatcher, in the opinion of some political observers. <coughs> but again, that's politics. Let's look at the prophecy. There's a struggle over Israel. There's a struggle over morality. Certainly, the abortion issue, which will bring the judgment of God. The Lord forgave many sins. He overlooked certain things. All manner of social injustice, even idolatry up to a point. But what he would not overlook is that form of idolatry, that form of demon worship, where babies were sacrificed to Molech. And they did this for some economic interest. This is the abortion industry. They call it women's rights. No, it's depriving babies of their rights. And it is not pro-life, it is pro-death. These are political euphemisms. Let's understand something else. The definition of sex has been changed. It is no longer scientifically defined as X and Y chromosomes. You are not a chromosomal male or a chromosomal female anymore by definition of gender. What happens was, if you say sex, you're talking about male or female. It's X and there's Y. There's a double X and there's an XY. That's all there is. A very rare super male of a triple Y, but basically you don't have anything other than male and female. Even hermaphrodites are one or the other. Gender is something else. In Latin and Greek in Greco-Roman languages and the languages that evolved from them. Gender is not necessarily to do with sex. We see this in the New Testament, where Jesus is referred to as a Petra, the feminine, as the rock of our salvation. Gender in Greek has to do with the way the word is used in the context of a sentence. So too, in Latin languages, a female noun or a female sounding noun can take the male article, like mapa, map in Spanish. But you say el mapa, you don't say la mapa. Gender is more fluid linguistically. What society has done, the mainstream media, the academic establishment, and the democratic and much of the establishment Republican Party in particular have done is they've replaced sex with gender, gender identity, because gender is not fixed scientifically. It is not genetically determined. Now, this is not even reasonable, but that's the way society is gone. There is a battle over these issues. Constitutionally, in fact, the Supreme Court had no right to decide what it did on same-sex marriage. No right. Constitutionally, if the Constitution is silent on an issue, it is for the states to decide for themselves. There should have been referendums in each state whether to allow civil unions, same-sex marriages, or neither one. It is completely an unconstitutional legislating from the bench by a corrupt judiciary. Hence, you see a battle for the judiciary with the Brett Kavanaugh nomination. Now, Brett Kavanaugh is not as conservative as Mr. Gorsuch. He's not that strict of a constitutionalist. He is really right center, and he's somewhat constitutional in his thinking juridically and legally, but not as constitutional as Senator Ted Cruz, for instance. 
is not really someone other than a potential swing vote the way that Justice Kennedy had been, Justice Kennedy being a very negative figure. Mr. Roberts, another Republican, a very negative figure. Uh, remember, the Republican justices have done more damage to Judeo-Christian values than the Democratic justices. This is not to say the Democratic justices are any better. It is simply to say that it was the Earl Warren Supreme Court that kicked God out of the classroom. It was the Warren Burger Supreme Court that gave us Roe versus Wade and kicked God out of the maternity ward. Okay. It was Ronald Reagan's appointment against Sandra Day O'Connor, who wrote the decision outlawing the Ten Commandments in the Alabama Judicial Building, and who gave a, a deciding vote to allow same-sex marriages by declaring illegal Texas anti-sodomy laws that opened the door for <clears throat> a national rush towards homosexual and lesbian marriage. This was all done by Republicans. Um, the decision on Obamacare, it was Roberts, a Bush Republican. We cannot be sure that a Republican is going to be pro-life or pro-Judeo-Christian or pro-Constitution or a constitutionalist. We cannot say that. Mr. Kavanaugh is one of those kinds of Republicans. He is not a strict constitutionalist. Um, we've seen opposition to all kinds of constitutionalists, certainly to Clarence Thomas. It's amazing that if he'd been a black liberal, those opposing him would have been accused of racism. But because he was a black conservative, he is fair game. This is just a hypocrisy. The liberal establishment in both parties do not care about blacks. They do not care about women. They care about power. They will simply use such people as their patsies and stooges, but they don't really care about them. That is what we're seeing happening this week in prophecy. It is not just a political battle in the Senate or a battle in the media. It is another kind of battle. More and more abortion clinics are closing nationally. Statistically, more people are opposing abortion than are favoring it, ironically, including young people. There are more women against abortion now than there are pro-abortion. Yet they yell women's rights, women's rights, women's rights on the Nazi theory that if you repeat a lie often enough, people will think it is the truth. Oh, Trump is anti-women despite the fact that 53% of women voted for him. They want to make themselves a spokesman for all women when in fact they are in the minority. We see now the decline of feminism because of the inability of feminist women after the age of 30 to find husbands so often and to get married. This is a direct consequence of feminism, undoubtedly. Uh, and a lot of women, a number of women, are realizing that feminism has betrayed them and made them the next victim after men. It has hurt all of society. Uh, again, but there's a spiritual battle, a spiritual battle. This spiritual battle is, of course, related to Romans chapter 1, the gender identity crisis spoken of in Romans 1. So what is happening now with the Kavanaugh situation? This woman, quote unquote, Dr. Ford, is an anti-Trump political activist. And her mother was evicted by a juridical decision issued by the mother of Mr. Kavanaugh, who was also a judge. There's no question as to her personal motives for doing what she's doing, or allowing herself to be used the way she is. But we're supposed to forget that and go back to something when they were both teenagers, when they were both underage 36 years ago, that she alleges to have happened. Now notice both witnesses that she says were there say the event never happened, as well as Mr. Kavanaugh. 
one woman after another who has known Mr. Kavanaugh and worked with him intimately and professionally in the legal profession and in the court system, one after another has stood up and said, he is not like this. We've never known him to be any kind of a sexual predator. It is not his mode of behavior. These are women who know him. This woman, Dr. Ford, is unable to give the time or place or even the year. She has changed the story in the Washington Post three times. Now, this would be thrown out of any court. But you have the, the feminist senator from New York. You have a senator from California, uh, Camila Harris. You have Senator Blumenthal from Connecticut all saying that they believe this woman, even though the burden of evidence in any juridical sense is against her, this would be dismissed. They're demanding an FBI investigation of something that's not even a federal crime, but he has had already six background checks and nothing of a sexually predatory nature has ever emerged. Don't know the time, don't know the place, the people she says were witnesses say it never happened. And additionally, on top of all that, the women who do know him say it is not his forte to behave that way. Yet, he's being pronounced guilty. Rosie O'Donnell said he's a rapist. On what basis? This shows the vehemence and hatred. What is driving it? It's not logical. It is obviously anti-constitutional and anti-American to pronounce somebody guilty without any evidence, more so when most of the evidence shows he can't be guilty, that he's not guilty. What's driving this kind of vehemence? There's a demonic power on back of it. It's not about Kavanaugh or the stooge of the left, Ford. It is rather about the battle for the spiritual and moral future of the nation concerning other issues, particularly right to life, as opposed to using abortion as a form of birth control and calling it women's rights when most women oppose it. They are fighting desperately. They are angered and incensed that Hillary Clinton lost the election. Couldn't believe it happened. The mainstream media is declining in its popularity, in its readership, in its viewership. Most of it is declining. The ones, the elements that are not declining tend to be right center like Fox or, or One America. Social media has replaced the power of mainstream media, even though social media is left wing dominated and controlled, it still gives avenues of free expression that until now have allowed all voices to be heard fairly. The battle is very much a spiritual one. Now again, I am not a particularly big fan of Mr. Kavanaugh. I would rather have seen somebody more conservative and more constitutionalist than Mr. Kavanaugh. But he may politically be the best the administration believes it can get at the present time. All I am saying is, what we are seeing transpiring in the media is not just about political power. It is about moral and spiritual issues. It is an extension of the battle in the heavenlies. It is absolutely vital that we pray that the hand of the Lord will intervene in this situation. And it is absolutely vital we pray for the upcoming midterm elections this week in prophecy. Let us move on. Events in the Middle East, although not a lengthy list this week in prophecy, contains unusually important developments. One of which is the Revolutionary Guard Parade in Akbaz, the oil city in Iran. So far, 30 have been killed. The Revolutionary Guard are the enforcement and military arm, roughly what the SS was to Hitler 
as the military of the Nazi party, the Revolutionary Guard are the equivalent for Iran. They are fighting Israeli interests in Syria. They are players in southern Lebanon in partnership with Hamas. And they are the muscle of the mullahs in Iran. At their parade, 30 were killed in this attack against the regime. This indicates that the economic crisis in Iran that is about to become worse because of the American oil bargain and the American government not giving in to left-wing European pressure who don't care about human rights or terror, but only short-term profits. Causing the economic havoc that it is already beginning to cause, but will certainly be exasperated in the month of November, is now having not only social repercussions and political repercussions, but essentially revolutionary repercussions. People taking up arms against the regime. A precedent in Iran has been set. Remember Daniel chapter 10. Iran emerges as a strategic threat to the existence of Israel at the end of the age. Hence, what we are seeing taking place in Iran is again a battle for Iran, the prince, the principality of Persia that Daniel saw. This great demonic power now being expressed through radical Shia Islam. There is a battle. This challenge may be part of God's gracious respite before the arrival of the kingdom of Antichrist. Israel may also be receiving a period of respite. Mr. Netanyahu, as Mr. Trump, has prevailed against political enemies to an unbelievable degree. Theresa May is the most unfortunate Prime Minister of Great Britain and she is no friend of Israel. However, evangelical dominated Northern Irish Unionist parties saved her political neck and saved Britain from an anti-Israel Corbyn government. Again, a spiritual battle. What you saw this week in Iran is undoubtedly the battle described in the book of Daniel with the prince, that is, the principality, the Rashiot controlling Iran. Let's move on. Seven more major fires, seven more major fires have been set by incendiary balloons launched from Gaza. Border rioting has increased resulting in further shootings and self-defense by the Israelis. These things are continuing, and they're not likely to become abetted in the near future. It shows a desperation, of course, by Hamas, but it also shows a determination by Israel. Iron domes remain operational. Israel is not giving up an inch when these rioters attempt to crash the border the israelis respond not with the force they could and some say they should but it just shows how the hamas regime will use their own people as human cannon fodder many of the palestinian arab people in gaza do not want this they realized that under Israel, their standard of living increased by 320%, only to decline again after Hamas came to power. This week in prophecy. This week in prophecy, the Israeli Air Force Chief of Staff, uh, Amika Norkin, was in Moscow answering questions posed by the Russian military high command. On the double uh, I-20 crash that killed between 15 and 19 Russian Air Force personnel, 
Initially, Russia blamed Israel for this by congesting the airspace, even though it was a Syrian missile that inadvertently shot it down. Israel has presented electronic and other evidence showing that Israel was not operational in the immediate area at the time it happened and was not a major contributing factor in the downing. It was the incompetence of the Syrians and perhaps the carelessness of the Russians. The Israelis had no actual hand in it. But Mr. Putin needs someone to blame. There's a political cost for this, even in Russia. What is really happening this week in prophecy is the following. An American aircraft carrier battle group led by the USS Harry Truman is storming and sailing towards the eastern Mediterranean. Russia has announced a closure of sea and airspace, of airspace over the eastern Mediterranean from the coast of Syria down to Lebanon, out to Cyprus. Now you have a British and uh, air base where American and surreptitiously sometimes Israeli aircraft operate from Cyprus. At the same time, the USS Harry Truman is sailing to that area. But the Russians have closed down international airspace over international waters. This is causing the Israeli Air Force to direct its airstrikes against Iranian and Iranian-backed targets inside Syria by flying either directly from Israel over land, over the Golan Heights, into Syria, or possibly via Jordan. We can't be sure of the level of Jordanian cooperation with Israel, but we know the Jordanians have been cooperating with the Israelis and Americans, at least to some degree. This is creating a potential conflict that could involve the United States up against Russia. Also, a potential conflict of Israel against Russia. Remember, American Marines and Special Forces have already killed up to 300 Russian mercenaries on the banks of the Euphrates. Russia has had a series of mishaps. The Turks shot down a Russian fighter jet, causing national embarrassment and scandal inside Russia. Now, this reconnaissance plane with 15 to 19 personnel on it is down by Syria. I will bless them that bless thee and curse them that curse thee. Havoc and confusion are wrecked on Mr. Putin in fulfillment of God's Abrahamic promises to the descendants of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. We will always see this. Of course, we don't expect the Russians or Mr. Putin to believe it. We don't even expect most Israelis to believe it. But saved Christians need to be aware of it. This closure of airspace could blossom into something much more serious after the American battle group arrives with the USS Truman. But already, again, the British air base in Cyprus is used by all NATO forces, not just the British, but also the Americans. And there is covert Israeli operations taking place from there at certain times. This is a powder cake. It is a powder cake. It is also an area of some territorial dispute concerning the mineral rights. Again, the Leviathan oil and natural gas fields are off the northern Galilee coast, but extend in a north um, westerly direction towards Cyprus. The governments of Lebanon and Syria are attempting to make claims. It is, of course, American horizontal drilling that is allowing the Israelis to tap into this resource for economic advantage. But Russia 
understands exactly what is happening. Russia wants instability in the Middle East and does not like countries it does not control or is not in bed with, like Iran, to sell oil, simply because Russia itself is an oil state. It is driven by oil and natural gas exports. It has no other major exports other than arms. It's dependent on oil and gas exports. When the price of crude oil goes down, Russia has a problem. Russia's main oil partner in the Middle East is Iran, but the American embargoes will now affect Iran. The United States is obviously trying to amplify the political and social confusion and upheaval inside Iran already taking place into something more major. And again, this shootout, this attack at the parade in Akvaz is something that sets a precedent in this regard. But understand the Russian factor. Understand it acutely. All of these things are coming into play, and they're coming into play this week in prophecy. Please pray for Israel, for Mr. Netanyahu, for the peace of Jerusalem. Please pray for the persecuted Christians in Muslim countries, certainly in Iran, in Syria. Please pray for President Trump and Mr. Pence. Please pray. Our prayers will determine everything. The outcomes of elections, the kings and the leaders that are established and the ones that are removed. We have a vote in democratic countries and I don't suggest our vote is not important, it is. But our prayers are even more important and more powerful. The battle is spiritual. The battle for the moral destiny of the United States, the battle for Israel, the battle for the salvation of Arab and Jew, Gentile alike. This week in prophecy, please pray. My name is James Jacob Prash at the moment in Los Angeles. God bless and thank you so much for listening.